Hi everyone, I'm here in our wine lab at Chone Farm to test titratable acidity. First things first, with testing titratable acidity, safety goggles. We're using sodium hydroxide, that's a strong base. We use it fairly in fairly low concentration, but it's still strong enough base to especially hurt your eyes. You don't want to get it on your skin. If you do, just rinse it right off. I don't use gloves when I'm working with 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide, but I make sure if I feel my hands being a little soapy, slimy, that means I've got a, a little bit of sodium hydroxide on my skin. So I wash it off right away in the closest sink. But be sure you wear your safety goggles because you definitely don't want to get that in your eyes. And wear your safety goggles if your lab mate is doing an assay because they may splash and it may impact you. Even if you're not working on an assay at the time, wear your safety goggles to protect yourself from anything else going on in the lab. I've got all that I need here. I've got 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. I've got phenol phthalene. I have put 200 mils of water in this graduated cylinder. I'm going to add that to my flask. Before I get started on the titration, I need to put in my burette 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. So I've got a funnel at the top of the burette. I'm going to fill the burette with sodium hydroxide. I've made sure my stopcock is closed before I filled the burette. You don't have to fill the burette right to the zero mark. We're going to read the starting volume every time we do a titration. So just fill it up so you have enough to do a couple of titrations or however many you're doing that day in your lab. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that this little tip down here is full of, of sodium hydroxide because if we don't fill that before we do a titration, we will overestimate the amount of sodium hydroxide we needed to neutralize the acid in our wine. So I'm just gonna drain a little bit of that into a waste beaker here. All right, I'm gonna check, make sure there are no air bubbles in that little tip. Nothing leaks, so I'm good to go. Now, before I add wine to my flask to actually do the assay, we have a problem. We put water in here. That water may, might have some acid in it, in it. In other words, it might not be neutral. It might be slightly acidic. And so we need to get rid of any acidity in here before we add our wine to test the acid in our wine. We don't want acid from the water interfering with the acid, the test of acid in the wine. So I'm gonna neutralize any acid in here by adding a little bit of sodium hydroxide. So what I'll do first is add my four or five drops of phenol phthalene. Swirl that around a little bit. Now, when you're first doing a titration, it's good to get used to how to drip the phenol or the sodium hydroxide in your bur burette fairly slowly into the flask. And so you'll get a feel for how to turn th this stopcock such that you get a slow drip. Now, I, that was way too much, right? So this stopcock, I found out, I just found out, is very, you turn it just a little bit and you get a pretty big flow. So you gotta get to know your, app, your apparatus. I just overshot this. I wanted this to be a very, very slight pink color. And that means, that would have meant I neutralized all the acid in the wine, or in the water rather. But I overshot it. So if it's this pink, you need to start over. The problem is you wanna get back to this color at the end of your titration. With something this pink, you don't know if you just barely finished the titration or if you overshot it by a lot. So this is too pink, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, I have a fresh 200 milliliters of water in my flask. I'm gonna add my phenol phthalene again. And I'm gonna neutralize the acid in the water. But this time I'm gonna go very slow. I just got one drop in there, and you'll see it's a little pink. Hopefully you can see that okay. When I swirl it, 
it stays pink. What you want is a pale pink color about like this that will remain for about 20 seconds. Okay, right? So now I know I'm starting with water that's neutral. The next thing I'm going to do is add my wine to my water. So I want to add five mils of wine according to our protocol. Sometimes you could use more. Five's pretty traditional. And I have a volumetric pipette here that when I draw wine up to this little thin line there, that's going to be exactly five mils. I want to read the bottom of the meniscus just like you do when you read a hydrometer and make sure that bottom of the meniscus is right on that line. I'm going to dispense that into my flask. So now in my flask I've got 200 mils of water, 5 drops of phenolphthalein, and 5 mils of wine. So now I just titrate this. In other words, I add sodium hydroxide to neutralize the acid in the wine. The way I know all the acids neutralized is when I have a pale pink color, just like the one I started with. The one I started with faded a little bit over time, but you want to get back to just that little bit of pink color like I had initially, and you want it to persist for 10 to 20 seconds. Most important now is how much sodium hydroxide will I add to neutralize the acid in the water. So I need to know my starting volume. And so an easy way to read a burette is have something white, put it behind your burette, and read the bottom of the meniscus. And I'm at 5.6 milliliters, okay? 5.6 milliliters. And I'm reading from the top. Just make sure you have, uh, you're reading in the right direction. And I always write that down. No matter if I'm doing just one assay, I often forget what that initial reading was. That's my starting volume of sodium hydroxide. And now I'm just going to slowly drip sodium hydroxide into my wine until I have that pink color that persists. You can probably see that those first few drops, that pink color goes away. Everybody has different techniques with titratable acidity. I like to swirl with my right hand, I'm right-handed, and open the stopcock with my left. So that's usually how I do it. And I just keep swirling as I slowly drip into the solution. I'm taking my time here. I'm not sure, I've, this is the first time I've titrated this wine. I don't know how much acid is in it. So I'm going to take my time. Now it looks like the pink is starting to remain a little longer. You can see it spread out a little bit before it goes away. Whoop! And I just overshot it. I turned it the wrong way. It happens to all of us. It'll happen to you for sure. Don't worry about it. This is practice. All you do is start over. So I'm going to do it again and I'll show you when I get close to the end point. Okay, I'm redoing this. I did a new a new 200 mils of water, put phenolphthalein in that, I neutralized the water, and then I added 5 mils of wine. And now I'm titrating once again to try to get to that nice pale pink endpoint. I'm going to slow down the drip so that I can try and stop it right at the end point when I have a pale pink that persists. So you can see the pink is starting to remain a little longer. Still not quite st staying for long enough, but I'm really close. And I think I'm probably there. Let's see if this persists. Yep, that's it. So that's the kind of pale pink color that you want. Not that bright color we had before, but something about like that. Next I'm going to read the ending volume of sodium hydroxide. My ending volume is exactly 14. In this second titration I started at 10.3 mils, I ended at 14. So I used 3.7 milliliters, 
14 minus 10.3, 3.7 milliliters, and I will use that in the calculation of titratable acidity. The formula is in your worksheet. I've got my worksheet here. At the bottom is that formula. So I take 3.7 milliliters of sodium hydroxide that I used, multiply that by 0 0.1. 0 0.1 normal is the concentration of sodium hydroxide. That'll be right on the bottle if you buy it pre-made like we have here. So 3.7 times 0 0.1 times 75 and divided by the volume of the wine sample, which in our case is five milliliters. I did that math and it gave me 5.55 grams per liter of titratable acidity. So that's my answer, it's that simple. Let me know if you have questions. There are some other videos to help out, but that is titratable acidity. Very simple assay, most small wine labs will do this. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.